what is going on everyone and welcome back to another YouTube video. My name is Noah Shaw or Ford Sixpo and today we're going to be adding some lighting to my new 2021 Ford Bronco Wild Track. Thanks to Last Fit LED Lighting, they sent us a full light bar for the top of our front bumper and two pods for the top next to the mirror. So let's go ahead and dive right into it and unbox these packages and see what we've got. So starting off with the light bar. Already the packaging is very, very good. I took it out of the original cardboard box and they've got it all padded up for us here nicely. So we're gonna take it out and remove the side brackets out of the side of the box and set the box aside. So right out of the packaging, I can already feel the bar is really, really heavy, high quality, and looks like it's gonna be super bright. It's got a ton of little LED chips all the way along it. And the frame itself is just really heavy and nice high quality. And on all of their bars and pods and everything, they got a plug and play harness that is included. And I've already unboxed it, but we've got our full switch wiring harness. It's all relayed and it's got the switch right here, push in and out, or you can connect it to your auxiliary switch. And at the ends of the harness, it's got the plug-in that connects right to your accessory lighting, just like so. Now that we've got the light bar all unboxed and set aside, we're gonna move right into the pods, sliding out of the sleek packaging, just like so. And right away, you can tell just the boxing alone is perfect. I'm gonna pull off that top, lifting it up and out of the packaging, and just like the front bar, quality and design, it's just super sleek and the finish is perfect. It's a nice black, so it's gonna really match the top of our Bronco and the tent all the way around. These are also, for being a small little pod, they're super heavy, so we're gonna set those aside and grab the little accessory box out for these. So in the packaging for the accessories, it also comes with these little splitter wires if you're wanting to just run it straight to your fog lights or tap in somewhere else, but it also comes with the same harness like the light bar but split into two ends so you can just tap right into both pods and hook it up to your switch that's already relayed and connect straight to your battery and ground, just like the light bar. I'm gonna give you all a close up look on the pods and the light bar, and then we're gonna dive right into installing these today on my Bronco Wild Track. And real quick, I'm gonna give you all a close up look at both of the pods and the front light bar so that you can just see how sleek this design is and they're all completely built out of a metal frame so they're not gonna get damaged. Just a very quality product all around. And onto the light bar with their branding there, you can see all of the LED chips along it with also the metal frame with the split design on the back to keep it cool. And also included with the pods, we've got our mounting bracket that slides over for them to hook onto our mirror assembly. All right guys, so let's go ahead and get right into this install on the front light bar on top of the bumper and our pods up top next to the mirrors. All right guys, so starting off right away on top of the mirrors, your Bronco actually come completely accessory ready. So we just have to remove this torque screw and then we're gonna see where exactly we want our fog bracket. I'm gonna be mounting it on this one so it has more of an angle and it's closer to the mirror and out of the way from my windshield as if it was mounted right here instead. So we're gonna go ahead, remove this torque screw and get this bracket installed in place right there. So right away I grab a Torx little socket and right out that little screw comes and in we can place our bracket with that same factory screw. Just point it in the direction you're going to want. We can move it later on if we decide to change the direction. We're going to go ahead and run this down slowly. I went ahead and pointed it a little bit outside following the groove of the lines in the mirror so we get a little bit brighter and wider span of our lighting. So we're gonna go ahead and get the fog light itself actually mounted in place now as well. Now moving on, we've got our small little Allen head key screws. Those screws are gonna mount right to the side of the pod right there on the bracket. So we're gonna go ahead and set it in place, tuck our wire behind for right now, and make sure we've got the logo facing upright. And we're gonna set our screws into place and get them started here and then run them down with our Allen key right after. Make sure our light's exactly where we want, then I'm gonna do the final little tightening. And then we're gonna move on. Go ahead and repeat the process of installing the actual pod on the passenger side now. Moving on to our passenger side, I'm a little bit worried our bullet antenna is gonna hit. So I'm gonna go ahead and unscrew that and set it out of the way. 
and then we're gonna go ahead and remove that accessory mounting bolt on the outside, and then we're gonna grab our bracket, making sure it's pointing forward, put our screw in, start it by hand so we don't mess up our threads. Give it a little tight. I'm gonna grab my paw just like the other one. I'm gonna set the wire out of the way so we don't scratch anything, and then I'm gonna ensure our logo is upright again. I'm gonna get these small screws started on the side of the bracket into the pod now by hand. Working is a little bit harder out today. In Texas, it's a good 28 degrees to around 35 today. So it's super cold, my hands are freezing. But we're gonna get this project all knocked out today because I am super excited to get all these lights put on the Bronco. So I'm gonna run that passenger one down now and get my Allen key out and get these all snug down into place. The exact same angle I did on the driver's side light and soon it's gonna be a lot nicer because I'm gonna be working in my fully enclosed 24 foot by 40 foot shop with full AC and heat. I just got finished doing all the epoxy metallic flooring. If y'all have me on Snapchat or seen my updates on TikTok, you would have known, but we're getting the insulation all put in next week and the garage door finally comes in tomorrow. So I'm super excited for that as well but it'll definitely make working in all of my vehicles a lot easier and not so tedious being out here in the cold or the summer hot heat. But now we've got this last pod almost all the way tightened down, point it all where I want it now. I'm gonna get one last little tightening and then boom, our light is mounted in place nice and secure. And just like the driver's side, we're gonna get this one mounted down and through the hood neatly so we don't really see it. And we're gonna have all the front lights up top mounted up and ready to go. Just like that, you can see how good these pods fit in the factory location. I'm super happy with it. So we're gonna go ahead and move on to the wiring section now for these lights. Same thing for the driver's side pod. The fitment is just absolutely perfect. Last fit, these brackets and everything just line up amazing. And the wiring and quality and all the material on these pods are just very, very good. So make sure y'all check them out. Had to make a trip over to the shop real quick to pick up some tools out of my toolbox. And if you haven't already seen it, we got the 26 by 16s mounted up from my 22 F350 build for when the lift kit's on. And you can already see how good those pods are gonna look all lit up on the Bronco. And onto the shop, if you haven't seen it, the other day I got some epoxy all mixed up the sealer and that sealant coat went all on and it did an amazing job. You can see kind of the grit in it at certain angles, but if you're looking right under the light, just like that, it turned out amazing. I'm so excited for that. I got it all sealed off before I laid it down. So it's perfectly clean. But a couple tools we're gonna need that I actually didn't grab is gonna be some Torx wrenches to get those top ones off. And then I'm gonna need a pair of dikes as well. And I'm gonna grab some zip ties so we can make all our wiring nice and neat and some heat shrink connectors. So I'm gonna be hooking it up to our auxiliary switches. Back in the Bronco we go. And if you've been considering getting one of these Broncos, I gotta say the quality and the craftsmanship in the interior alone, and just the drivability all the way around on these units is absolutely insane. It's blown my mind out of the water. All right guys, just getting back. I got the tool to remove it now. We're gonna remove these two top inner screws. They are super tight, so we got to be careful we don't scratch the drill. I'm, I just got it popped loose, and then I'm going to unscrew it by hand. And we're going to be mounting our brackets that go behind the light bar right here on each end. So I'm going to get these screws out, show you all the brackets we're going to be using, and then get them mounted up to the light bar itself. Boom, just like that. We've got our two long torque screws out. They are a T40, if you're wondering, just to make it easier on you. So moving on to the front light bar, I'm gonna be installing it with these back brackets that we're gonna be mounting down with the factory screw. And from and behind, we're gonna be using these smaller hex head screws and the nuts. And to actually be mounting those back brackets on, we're gonna grab each side's nut and be sliding it in the side of the back of the bar and then sliding it across the bar into place to where we want our bracket in. It's a little hard to see, but you can see how the nut can slide down and go into place where you want. So first things first, I'm gonna grab our rear mounting bracket for the light bar, and we're gonna be putting our factory screw through both of these and sliding it all the way through, and we're gonna get mounted into place so we can get the light bar on, just like so. Just like that. Just like that, I got it started off by hand, and we can kind of slide it down to where we need it for the other side. 
just got this side hand tied in, and I'm going to grab our Allen key, and we're going to get to tightening this down completely. And just like that, I got the front light bar all mounted up. You can see how it fits perfectly in the factory spot where that hole was already drilled out and had the torque screw on. And I did have to go ahead and actually add the spacer in between the light bar and the bracket that's included with the kit to make sure that screw fit in right. But already you can see how cool it looks all mounted up on top of that bumper. It fits in perfect and it looks super slick. So now we're gonna go ahead and route our light bar wiring all the way up to behind the grill to the battery as well as the top two fogs, and we're gonna run it all to the harness and get everything wired up and ready to be all lit up. Moving on, I'm gonna go ahead and go on the inside and we're gonna pop this hood and get all of this wiring harness hooked up. It's two separate harnesses, and I'm gonna hopefully hook it up to the auxiliary switches so we don't have any wires running from under the hood into the cab. It'll be super clean and keep our overhead switches and be able to use them instead. So let's go ahead and do that right away. So I'm going to get the hood to our little 2.7 liter all popped open and propped up. So being my first experience with the Bronco, I'm going to guess it's just like the Super Duties and all these wires we got coming out of the firewall over here tucked behind some tape. I'm going to pull them out one by one so we don't even have to undo the electrical tape. And I'm going to test them and see which ones get power while the switches are turned on because we do have six right here. So we're going to go to the color codes on the manual and run them to auxiliary one and two. So for identify the actual colors on the auxiliary switches, I'm gonna go over here to features and go to the owner's manual that's actually included on the factory radio here. So in the categories, we're gonna to go to instrument panel and interior, scroll all the way down, click auxiliary switches if equipped, and then we're gonna be clicking identify the auxiliary switch wiring. Then right here, here is the color code and scheme for all the auxiliary switches. So today we're gonna to be hooking them up to auxiliary one and two. So I'm gonna be using the yellow wire and the green slash brown wire. And real quickly, I'm gonna show you all what I went ahead and did with the wiring. I went ahead and took off that one screw on the other side on the other panel, lifted it up and tucked the wire behind, under, and through out the front on each side. So we've got this harness coming through on the passenger side. And then on the driver's side, we got our harness coming down and under through here. Onto my front bar, I went ahead and routed the wire down through the top and actually behind the grill, and I grabbed it from the crack. And then now we're just gonna go ahead and start pulling this through from up above until we get it completely hidden and out of the way. Cut and strip back just like that. And then our second auxiliary wire is this green and brown wire that we're also gonna cut back. And then we're gonna test power to it. Make sure everything is good. Okay, so after testing the system, we're gonna be running our power and ground straight to the battery. Then down here by our toggle switch, what I went ahead and did is we're gonna be cutting that off and you've got three leads coming out. We're gonna push the black and yellow out of the way. And we've got this red toggle lead and this is the one that's gonna be going to your auxiliary switch to make sure the light powers on when we hit the switch. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this red lead ran all the way to our auxiliary wire for the pods and the light bar. And then we're gonna be testing it with the switches. And since the harness just trying to reach directly to the light bar, it's just super long and unnecessary. I cut out all this extra wire. I'm going to throw it aside. And then I'm going to just cut these back just like so on each end. And I'm going to splice them together. And we're going to put the power to the power, the ground to the ground with the heat shrink butt connector. And then I'm going to go over it with electrical tape. Keep it super clean. And then we just got our wire routed from there to there, straight to the battery right here. And then right alongside to the aux switch. Clean install is the only thing I like to do here. I don't like to take any shortcuts. I like to keep everything I do top notch and perfect for all of my builds. So why not just take the extra time, do it right the first time, not worry about any fire hazards or anything like that and just knock it out. So I'm gonna come back to y'all when I got a little bit more of a wiring update and we get rid of all of this junk. Here's a before and after. We can now go ahead and start tucking it around and under and you can already see how clean that is. It's like there's no wire there at all. Looks completely factory. Lastly, I went ahead and got the two leads coming off the fog lights all shortened down and I'm gonna get them all heated up and shrink connected here And then I ran the one fog light lead all the way under the wiper cowl You can't even see it barely only at some spots. I tucked it all the way along And then that's gonna be a clean install all the way to the, all the auxiliary switches I just got to get it tucked back behind here and hook up my last lead and we'll be all ready to go 
all right guys all wrapped up you can see how much wire we saved off of that harness and look how neat and clean we got this all wired up you can barely tell we did anything back there i still gotta tuck down the other auxiliary switches a little bit but coming across all the way to the other pod super neat and clean all the way so we're gonna go ahead and take the hood down now put the latch up who's this hood and check out that clean install front light bar all mounted up into place with factory fitment as well as the pods turned out amazing so let's go ahead turn all these lights on and get them tested down the road Auxiliary 1 and Auxiliary 2 for both of our lights all hooked up now. Everything is working perfectly. I'm going to go ahead and start the Bronco up and get those heated seats turned on and the heater cranking up hot. It is super cold today doing this install. My hands are freezing off right now. All right, guys, check it out. We've got 30% windshield tint on the window, and this is just my headlights going right now. I'm going to throw on the high beams, and then here is our big light bar, and then the side pods. We've got all of our lights on, lighting up the night. You can see the rain passing in. But I think that just gives the Bronco so much more of a mean look. Check it out. It's hard to capture on camera, but man, does it look good. Pods and light bars are really doing a lot of work. You can see how much more width the pods get us out to the side and how much more length the light bar gets us all the way down the road. All right, guys, back in the cab. I'm going to give you one last look. Here's our fogs our low beams, high beams, then our light bar, and then our side fogs. Here's the side fogs again. You can see how much width they give us. And then if you look out the window and without the tint through the front windshield, you can see how much more of a big difference it really does make out to the side. I've got to say, I'm very impressed with this install and how much difference the lights make, and I'm very happy. But let's go ahead and get headed back to the house now and end off this video. All right, guys, so that's going to wrap it up for today's video. If you did enjoy, please leave a like on the video. Comment down below. Let me know what you thought about it and what you thought about the lights. And subscribe to the channel if you haven't already so I keep creating more content just like this. And if you haven't already seen it, we've got a lot of stuff going down on my 2022 F350 build as well. But other than that, thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you all next time.